Proverbs 30, verse 11 and 12. Oh, are you still going to go? Yes, it says... I got a cooler full eye. Proverbs 30, verse 11 through 12 says, There's a generation that curses its father and does not bless its mother. There's a generation that is pure in its own eyes, yet is not washed from its filthiness. I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. He cleansed me of my sins. He purified me of my sins. If you're not following Jesus Christ, you have no cleansing and purification of sins. 1 John 1, 5 through 7 says this. This is the message we've heard from Jesus and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he's in the light, then we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So if you want to be cleansed of your sin, washed of your sins, truly pure in God's eyes, you have to be walking in the light as he's in the light. The Bible says, he who covers his sin shall not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. And if you want mercy, you have to confess and forsake your sins. You can't try to cover your sins up. If you, embarrassed for who? Yourself? Because you're a filthy mouth? You should be embarrassed for your filthy mouth. Okay, well, you can say that if you want. It doesn't hurt my feelings. I'm not going to cry in the corner. I'm not going to stop preaching because you're insults. Well, I, I can't save souls, sinner. You have to choose to be saved. You have to forsake your sins. No, I am saved. I'm saved by the blood of the Lamb. He's cleansed me. He's purified me. He's changed me. I'm a new creature in Christ. All the old things have passed away. Behold, all has become new. I used to be a drunkard, used to be a fornicator, used to be a liar and a thief, used to be an idolater, but Christ delivered me. And the Bible says Jehovah Witnesses are going to hell as well. The hell they don't believe in because they don't believe in the true Jesus Christ. They don't have the doctrine of Christ. They believe Jesus is some angel that came to came to earth in human form. What a bunch of nonsense. The Bible said that Jesus Christ in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. That means Jesus Christ is not a creature. He is the Creator. Nothing was made. He wasn't made by, and nothing was made, so it was made by him. He's not a created being like the Jehovah Witnesses falsely believe. And Jehovah Witnesses will be cast into the lake of fire called Gehenna in the scriptures. Where worm does not die and fire does not quench. And it's obvious your Jehovah Witness wasn't did nothing for you because you're a filthy potty mouth and your wicked sins. You haven't changed one bit. Hasn't it helped you one bit. It's obvious because it's a false religion, a dead religion. The Spirit of God is not. Well, that's what sinners do. You just expose yourself. Every time you open your mouth and act, you expose your wickedness. You show who you truly are. Jesus Christ said, either make the tree good and its fruit good or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by his fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure, evil things. But I say unto you that for every idle word men may speak, they'll give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your word you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. All you potty mouths out here today, your own words condemn you. You. They show the state of your heart that you're not right with God. You have a filthy heart needs to be cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Behold, Jesus Christ, John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Christ can cleanse your mouth out, not with soap, but the blood of his, of his sacrifice on the cross. He can change you like he changed me. I used to cuss like a sailor, a sailor, but God changed me. I was in the military. About every fourth word was a filthy word out of my mouth at one point in time, but Christ changed me overnight and I stopped it. I went and sinned no more. I gave my life to him because godly sorrow leads to repentance, to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world leads to life. So the Bible says, God commands you to repent. God commands you to give up your sin. What sin is so precious to you that you're willing to go to hell forever for it? 
your false religion, your idolatry? Are you willing to go to hell for that? Are you willing to go to hell for your immodest dress, your vanity? Are you willing to go to hell for your pride? Are you willing to go to hell for your lust and your drunkenness? Those things will lead you to hell. God doesn't want you to... Well, that's not what fornication is, sinner. Once again, the Watchtower didn't teach you very much. Fornication is sex outside of marriage, not sex in marriage. Sex in marriage is ordained by God. It's holy. It's godly. It's what God expects out of a marriage. A sex outside of marriage is fornication. Did the Watchtower teach you anything? Did it teach you anything? Yes, that false teacher, Charles Taze Russell, started this new religion back in the middle of the 19th century, leading people astray, still leading people astray. And you see the fruit of his works. You see the dirty, rotten fruit of his works today by this one woman. But Jesus Christ can even save her. Jesus Christ can cleanse her if she'll humble herself. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. God opposes the proud. God is against the proud, but gives grace to the humble. The Bible says you're saved by grace through faith. But you can't have grace until you humble yourself. You have to humble yourself. And that's the stumbling point right there for most sinners. They care too much about what people think about them. They want to show off for their friends and their family. They want to do all kinds of filthy things in front of them and think it's cool. But on Judgment Day, it won't be cool any longer. None of your sin will be cool on Judgment Day. Judgment Day is coming, the Bible says. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel with both wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he will destroy its sinners from it. So the scripture says, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them, of all their ungodly deeds they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things ungodly sinners have spoken against him. That's what Jesus Christ will do. I heard earlier when Brother Adam was preaching, people were saying, you can't judge, you can't judge. Who gave you the right to judge? Well, God gives me the right to judge in a temporal sense. God gave me the right to judge by preaching his word, preaching his counsel, preaching what's going to happen. But the ultimate judge is God. And some of you seem to take comfort in the fact that God is going to judge you. You say stuff like, well, only God can judge me. Only God can judge me. Is that really what you want? You want God to judge you? Because you're going to judge you a lot more harshly than I do. He sees what's going on in the inner parts, things I can't see. He knows your whole thought life, all of your life, all the thoughts you've ever gone through your mind. He knows what every idle word has ever come out of your mouth. I'm just judging what I see today. I can't imagine how much sin you have over the course of your whole life, and you really take comfort in the fact that the holy, holy, holy God of the universe is going to judge you in righteousness? You shouldn't take comfort in that. There's no comfort for a sinner in being judged by God. God is holy. He is pure. He judges uh, fairly. He doesn't judge on a curve. It's not like the professors who you, most people fail the test and they judge on a curve, let the, the low with the highest score go up to 100 and let everybody else go up above that. And that's not the way it works with God. God's going to judge you by his perfect, holy, and righteous law. And if you haven't forsaken your sins, if you haven't trusted in Jesus Christ, then it's going to be a terrible day for you. You have to give an account to God. The Bible says, fear God and keep his commandments. For this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. God knows the plans of your heart. He knows what you're planning in your heart, the wicked schemes you have in your heart. God knows about those things. He's going to judge you for those things. And that the fact that God knows your thoughts, your intents, your words, that should cause you to fear. That should cause you to, to want to get right with him, to stop playing games with your soul. The Bible says, if anyone wants to come after me, Jesus speaking, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel shall save it. And what should it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul in the end? What will it profit you to gain the whole world and lose your soul? And the fact of the matter is none of you are ever going to gain the whole world. You will never gain even half of the world. Even if you're Bill Gates, you have not gained the whole world. 
It's not going to profit you. If you gain, even if you could gain the whole world, what would it profit you to lose your soul in the end? You know what God, Jesus Christ is saying there? He's saying your soul is precious, it's valuable, and you should care about it enough to give up your sin. No sin is worth going to hell over. No lust, no beer guzzling, no lying, no stealing, no dishonoring your parents. No filthy language is worth going to hell over. Why not rather give up your sins? Repent therefore and be converted that your sins might be blotted out. The times of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord. And many of you have you have a long life ahead of you, and I plead with you today to, to just get right with God while you still have time. Give up your sin while you still have time before you develop lots of habits and, and slavery and addictions, things that you don't need to be getting involved in. Give up those things before you begin to become addicted to these things. Addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol, addicted to, to sex and pornography. While you're still free from those addictions, give them up altogether. The Bible says, do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you're that one slave to whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness? Yes, you're, you're either a slave to sin or a slave to righteousness. He that commits sin is a slave to sin, and a slave will not abide in God's house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. You can be set free from sin today. You can become a child of God today and be set free from your sin, whatever your sin may be. Many of you are addicted to watching TV, just binge watching your TV series. Many of you are addicted to your filthy music. Many of you love to, uh, to watch things on TV you shouldn't be watching or movies you shouldn't be watching. Many of you are even are idolatrous towards musicians and actors and actresses. God is going to judge you for those things. Sir, what's your favorite color? My favorite color matters not, young man. I love blue. Blue is That's, beautiful. Look at the sky. You gotta go back to Waco, buddy. Go back to Waco. Go back to your compound and your hair, I mean your meth lab. You've got a meth lab. Unrighteous judgment. I thought we couldn't judge, sinner. You've got a meth lab. Unrighteous judgment. I thought we couldn't judge. You've got a, you got a I, th I thought we couldn't judge. You've got a meth lab. I thought we couldn't judge. I thought we weren't supposed to judge. Well, why, why are you judging me? Well, well, you're the one that said we can't judge. I didn't say we couldn't you judge. Meth lab, but you got a I've never done drugs in my life. You're a liar. We're going to get Texas Walker Ranger to Go for it. Your meth lab, buddy. Yeah, I'm not living, I don't live in Texas. Never done drugs in my life. Unrighteous judgments. Unrighteous judgments. Who is the judge, though? Seriously. Well, God is the ultimate judge, but he calls us to judge as well. Jesus Christ said in John 7, 24, when you judge, judge with righteous judgment, not according to appearance. Oh my God. 1 Corinthians 2, 15 says, the spiritual man judges all things. That's what the Bible says. The Bible is judging them. The Bible says those things. We don't know what the Bible says, obviously. Dude, you've got a meth lab. You for sure have. I've never done drugs in my life, sinner. You're, you're a meth lab. You've got Maybe you're projecting your sin upon me. Maybe you're projecting your sin upon me. Brainwash people. You kidnap them. You hold them in your compound. More? You have a freaking meth lab. You're going to give an account for every idle word. You're going to give, give an account for every idle word, Sinner. Every idle word you speak, you give an account of it. Does the Bible, does it say anything about taking a nap? I just want to take a nap. You can take a nap, yeah, go for it. Could you, like, maybe, could you take the show down to that end, maybe? Well, we might, we might move eventually, but not right now. Dude, we sat here. Yeah, all day. It's good. You guys it's good to hear the word of God. In my ear. I'm, I'm, I'm pointing it that way. I'm pointing it that way. No, you're not. I'm pointing in your ear. And your little hoity meth lab partner over we, there. We could, uh, we could hear you. If you go down there, we could hear you. Well, you guys can go down there too if you want. I'm just it's trying a, to it's take a free a beach. Nap, but I, can't, I can't sleep. Dude. Well, you can move down too if you want. It's a free beach. We can, we can go wherever we want. Do you believe in any president is a good president? Any president is a good president? Yeah. I mean, you said you hated Trump. I never said I hated Trump. I don't hate anybody. Said he he didn't say he Trump. hates Trump either. No. You're lying. What about he doesn't hate anyone either. Anyone. They're not judges. So you're a judge of everybody. I, you, you asked me a question. I never even answered it. Yeah, I know. Answer it. No, I'm not going to answer it. I don't. I don't. Uh, you're. You, you bought a meth lab. You bought a compound. More unrighteous you judgment. Harem, you brainwashed. You're, you're storing up wrath for yourself. You steal babies. You're storing up wrath for yourself in the day of wrath. And the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Explain revelations to me, because. What, what about it? Well, tell me about. Do you believe in revelations? Of course I do. I'm teaching through it right now in my in my church. Yeah. Uh huh. And, and the, what, are you, you a Christian or what are you? I'm a born again, Bible believing, Bible obeying Christian, not a Roman Catholic. Not a Catholic. I was raised a Roman Catholic. I repented of that. Yeah. Became born again of the Holy Spirit. Same thing can happen to you, sir. Oh, you I was saved years ago. 
Well, you're not saved now. Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, if you, he'll judge the very if you were, end. If you ever were saved, you're not saved now, sir. You yeah. prove it by your works. I'm gonna pray Faith without works is dead. Psalm 66, 18, David said, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. He does not hear your prayers. You, meth lab, you regard iniquity you in your heart. Compound, you've got a harem. Doesn't regard, it's doesn't, okay. doesn't pay attention to your prayers if you regard iniquity in your heart. Think about it. Doesn't pay attention to your prayers. Yeah. So the Bible says, you need, you need to believe the Bible. We'll pray for your witness. The That's Bible says the Lord, the Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. You're not calling upon him in truth. You're calling upon him in lies. Well, so says the filthy mouth sinner. Of course you're going to accuse me. You don't like what I'm saying because you, you love your sin and you hate God. You love, you love your sin. It's, it's amazing how a, a potty mouth who falsely accuses me is going to call me of Satan. You are really that blind, aren't you? You're blind, aren't you? More lies. Never been there before in my life. Wherever your compound is, go back to your compound. Yeah, where is it? Because you know so much about me, where is it? And you know you know so much about me, where is it? Tell me where it is. Come on. You're prophesying, right? Tell, tell me tell me where it tell me where it is. Yeah. God knows the truth. God sees all. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. You're a disciple of Satan, buddy. You're a disciple. No, I'm a disciple of Jesus. The disciple of Satan would say that we have to keep on sinning. A disciple of Satan would cuss at a, a preacher of God and, tell, and make all kinds of false accusations. You know what Satan means? Satan means accuser. You're, you're just like Satan. You're a false accuser. Oh, yeah. You've accused me many times of, of falsely of many things. So you, you're just like Satan. You're of your father the devil. Right. Well, no, he doesn't have horns. doesn't have horns. He's not red, doesn't have a tail or a pitchfork. He'll be in hell with you if you don't repent. He'll be there suffering with you. He doesn't rule over hell. God rules over hell. God is the one who created hell. God will cast people. In fact, Jesus Christ, uh, the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 through 9, that when the Lord returns with his mighty angels and flaming fire, taking vengeance on all those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These he shall punish with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. God doesn't hear your prayer, sinner. Don't waste your breath on me. Repent. Get right with God. Get right with God while you still have time. You're, you're a fulfillment of Proverbs 30. You are pure in your, your own eyes, but you're not washed from your filthiness. You're, you're a fulfillment of, of Matthew 15. And Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. You're about the Pharisees. You draw near to me with your mouth and honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. You claim that you're going to pray to God, but your heart is far from God. You're not right with God. I've already been baptized. I wouldn't let a devil like you baptize me anyway. Yeah, I was Roman Catholic. I was raised Roman Catholic. I repented of that nonsense a long time ago. The same thing you need to do. The sign of the cross is not found in Scripture. The sign of the cross will not help you. The Pope can't help you. The Pope's not a vicar of Christ on earth. The Pope himself is an antichrist. He loves his father the devil. He doesn't speak for God. He speaks for the devil. Hey, you can keep following the Pope who's an antichrist. He's going to lead you to hell. And you can blaspheme God's name and the promise and the, and, the, and the progress. Well, there's your judgment again. You said we can't judge, and there you are judging me again. I thought we couldn't judge. You have a you have a plank in your eye. I'm trying to take a speck out of mine, supposed speck out of mine, anyway. Yes, but even 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 jealous of the Pope. I would never be jealous of a hellbound sinner. I wouldn't be jealous of him. I don't want anything to do with him except to call him to repentance. Call him the salvation. Because Christ can even save him. He, he is nothing like Jesus Christ. When he says Muslims can go to heaven and atheists can go to heaven and, and evolution is true and all kinds of nonsense like that, he's not he's not right with God, man. You just you, you delude yourself. You deceive yourself. Listen, what has Roman Catholicism really done for you? Has it changed your life? Has it transformed your life? Have you seen miracles happen? Have you has the spirit spoken within you? Has the has the, the scriptures been revealed to you, illuminated to you, where you understand things you don't understand before? No, of course not. Because there's no power there in Roman Catholicism. It's a dead religion. Well, it does nothing for your life. But Jesus Christ can help you. The Pope can't help you. Your priest can't help you. The Archbishop can't help you. The Roman Catholic Catechism can't help you. But Jesus Christ can help you. He can change you. He can deliver you. He can make you a new creature. He can make you someone that you, you're not now. The he can make you into who he wants you to be. Not who you want to be. That's his offer to you. He says, come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, 
and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. O oh, religion, dead religion, even the one that has a form of Christianity, is a heavy burden. It's a hard yoke. It's going to lead to hell. But Jesus Christ wants to remove that burden from you, remove that yoke from you, and give him his easy and light yoke. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Let them be ashamed and confounded and seek after my soul. Let them be turned back for reward shame and say, Aha, let all those who seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love my God be magnified. Have you ever heard that? Yeah, it's from the Psalms, right? So, what? I don't know what song that is. I don't have all that. 70! Okay, well, you don't have to be angry about it. Just I'm not, I, I love okay, it, though. Okay, when are, I go, when I are go, you a follower of Jesus Christ? Yes, sir. Are you, are you, are you living right in sin? Now. Yes. Well, then you can't be a follower Bullshit. of Jesus Christ. Bullshit! Oh, you got he filthy knows, mouth, he man. He knows your heart. you got a filthy mouth, man. you got a potty mouth. You're not a follower of Jesus Christ. You, you, you can't follow Jesus Christ and be a sinner. You do good, good things come to you. Good Lord knows that. You do bad, bad things. But you ask for forgiveness. You get on your knees every night and pray for sin. Then God you need to repent of sin, though. Repent of sin. Yes, sir. Don't keep doing it. Don't keep doing it. Repent of it. Go and sin no more. Tump it out, man. That's not sin. Is that is that alcohol? No, it's damn sunny delight. Oh, it's not alcohol? Okay, well, that's, that's fine. Uh, she got three letters and sunny delight. Okay, yeah. And some cinnamon sticks. Okay. That was called moonshine and rock on them. Okay, well, that's, that's sin. That's definitely sin. Where are you from, sir? Where are you from, sir? Wait, sir, sir, where, where are you from? Okay. Yeah, whiskey sellers are going to end up in hell. You need to repent. You're causing people to get drunk. Drunkards will not inherit God's kingdom. The Bible says offenses must come, but woe unto those through whom the offenses come. If you're attempting someone to sin by the way you're living your life, by your bad example, by the way you're dressed, by the way you're talking, by what you believe, you're going to give an account for that. You're going to give an account for that. They're going to give an account for their sin. But you're going to give an account for your tempt your, your bringing temptation in someone's life. I mean, if you're bringing temptation in someone's life, you're not like God. The Bible says God is not tempted by evil, nor does he tempt any man. And so if, if you're tempting people to sin, you're being the antithesis of God. You're being like the devil, not like God. Because God is not tempted by evil himself, nor does he tempt any man. So if you want to be like God, you've got to be pure like Him. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Not blessed is the man who causes temptation. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, that when he has been approved, he may receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love Him. James chapter 1 says, Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. That's very convicting scripture there for many people out here today to lay aside, not just hold on to, grab on to, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness, humility, the implanted word, the word of God, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. So you have to receive the word. You can't reject the word. You can't combat against the word. You can't uh, blaspheme against God's word. You need to hear God's word and receive it with humility and meekness. And then you need to walk in it. Because if you're a hearer of God's word, but not a doer, a doer of God's word, you're just deceiving yourself. You're deceiving. Stop deceiving yourself and uh, do God's word. You're like a man who looks at himself in the mirror and walks away and forgets what he looks like. Scripture says, you believe that there is one God, you do well. But even demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? It's faith that outworks the dead. It's for all the Roman Catholics here in a dead faith or other supposed Christian religions who have a dead faith. Faith without works is dead. Believing in God is not enough. Faith without works is dead. 
You have to do the Word of God. Blessed are those who do His commandments, that they might have the right to the tree of life and might enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. Don't love and practice lies. I mean, what, what good does lying do for you? Lying, it, it, it destroys all relationships. Dishonesty destroys all relationships. How can you even have an actual relationship with someone if you're constantly lying? Or they're lying to you. There's all, all kinds of distrust and, and doubt. And, and there can never be true love there because it's always uh, lying and dishonesty. But tell the truth. Be honest. Don't be a lover of lying. Who loves lies and practices lies will not enter into the kingdom of God. But only those who repent of lying. Because every liar shall have their part in the lake of fire, according to Scripture. No matter if it's a half truth, a white lie, a, a fib, whatever you want to call it to justify your lying. Technology is evil. Technology is not evil, that's a lie. That's, you sound like you're Amish. You sound like you're Amish. You sound like you're Amish. You're paying your monthly bill to a sinner. Okay, wh wh where's the Bible coming to me for doing that? Jesus said, give, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Caesar was a sinner. Jesus wasn't a sinner. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. You give a blow to Caesar. What's that? He said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. That's what Jesus said. Uh, actually, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says, you boast in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To boast in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I boast in him. I'm not boasting in myself. What does he say about meth labs? Oh, dr dr drug use is sorcery, according to Scripture. Drug use it condemns you, sends you to hell. Don't go to hell for your drug use. Don't go to hell for your pot smoking, your meth using. People destroy their lives. I I've seen before and after pictures of people on meth, man. It's just it's destroying their life. And we're just talking about physical life. It's destroying their eternity as well. Just like all sin. All sin is destructive. The wages of sin is death. Death is, de you know, sin is destructive to your life. Uh, sin is not, it's not good for you. It's not profitable for you to be sinning. It's, it's unprofitable for you to be sinning. And sin has never done you any good. So you get a little bit of pleasure for a season, but it doesn't do any good after that. Then you feel the guilt and shame of your sin, the condemnation of your sin. You have the consequences and repercussions of your sin. I mean, why do you think drunkards get DUIs and DWIs and get charged with manslaughter for, for hitting someone while driving drunk? Why do you think um, uh, foreigner kids get STDs and STIs? Why do you why do you think uh, drug users destroy their brain and, and 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 reverse their maturity backwards? You know these are things that happen when you use sin. Sin is not good for you. God's not trying to ruin your fun by telling you to stop sinning. God is trying to do what is right for you, do what is good for you by telling you to stop sinning. You're not made to be a sinner. You're made to be righteous. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. It's amazing to me. When you go out and preach the word of God, people don't want to hear it. They rather hear their filthy music. But the Bible said it's, it's, uh, it's better to hear the rebuke of the wise than to hear the songs of fools. So many of you listen to musicians. You, you plug your ears with your earbuds, listening on your iPods, to all kinds of filthy music. Just plugging your ears with it. Well, that's what you say. It's not, what, it's not what God says. God doesn't agree with you on that. God disagrees with you. God sees me as one of his children. One of his sons. Oh, now I'm a Muslim. So at first I was a meth user and I was from Waco and I have a harem and a, and a cult. Now, now I'm an ISIS. You, you give an account for every idle word, sinner. I, I, I hope you'll stop falsely accusing people. You're going to give an account for that. Yep, you're going to give an account for that, sinner. God is recording your words. I hope you repent of your sins. I hope I, I, I'm willing to forgive you. God, God's willing to forgive you, but you have to repent. You can't keep going on in your sins. Forgive myself for what? Yeah, so you don't even know. There's nothing for me to forgive myself of. I'm willing, I'm willing to forgive you of your false accusations if you repent. I was here since 12 o'clock. You come here. Actually, I didn't get here at 12 o'clock. We, we actually got here about 2 o'clock. 2.33, maybe, something like that. Huh? That's noise pollution, buddy. That's the respect. The Bible says, uh, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Go to the highways, the byways, and hedges and compel them to come in. Well, Trump's not going to save you on Judgment Day. Trump won't save you on Judgment Day. Trump won't save America. Only Jesus Christ can save America. And Jesus Christ will only save America if they repent. 
You know, if, if America doesn't repent of all their sins, then this Trump is going to be a blip on the radar. Whatever good he's doing for America will be a blip on the radar because you're not getting it right with God. The Bible says, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. I've, I've preached in Canada, too. I've preached in Niagara Falls. I've preached in Ireland. I've preached in Israel. I've preached in the Philippines. I've, I've preached wherever God tells me to go. i preached in Mississippi. No, you're not God. You have your father the devil. I listen to God, not you. No, I don't listen to you. I listen to God, not you. The Bible says, those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Uh, 1 Peter 4.2 said that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. We walked in revelry and drunkenness and lewdness and lust. We have walked in... Uh, drinking parties and abominable idolatries. Haven't you spent enough time in sin? Haven't you spent enough time living your sin? What has your sin done for you? It, haven't you learned your lesson yet from your sin? That it doesn't help you, it doesn't do you any good? Why don't you turn to Christ instead? What good has your porn watching do, done for you? What good? What, no, it hasn't done you any good, sinner. What, what good has, has your, your video game addiction done for you? Well, what good has your TV addiction and sitting in front of the TV all day done for you? Why well, didn't say you did? If the, if the shoe fits, wear it. No, no, I'm, I'm generality. Generality is I'm preaching. If, if, if the shoe fits, wear it. If the shoe fits, wear it. Or maybe you're just a liar. Maybe, you're, maybe you have a potty mouth. Maybe, maybe you're covetous. Maybe you're, maybe you're lustful. Maybe you're a thief. No, I'm none of those things, actually. I follow Jesus Christ. Well, I don't care what you say about me. It doesn't really make a difference to me. Well, then why are you talking to me and get offended if you don't care? Well, because you're talking to me. Yeah, I'm just talking back. I'm responding to your questions. Well, no, God, God, no, no, God doesn't love you more. That, that's a lie. The Bible says that God, in John 3, 16, and Romans 5, 6, 3, that God has a, you know, has a love for all of humankind in this sense, that he wants You're all to be saved. Right. He wants none to perish. That Jesus Christ died for all. That's the kind of love God has for all people. But God has a special kind of relational love. God has a relational love for those who obey him. In John 14, 21, Jesus Christ said, He who has my commandments and keeps them is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Yeah, so, so yeah, Jesus Christ has a special kind of love to those who has his, have his commandments and keep them. He will manifest himself to them, as will the Father. will manifest himself to them. But if you don't keep the commandments of God, you don't have that kind of love from Christ, that relational love. You have The only relationship you have with Christ, if you're still living in sin, is a judge and criminal relationship. But you can have a, 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 a friendship with God. You can go to a friend of God like Abraham today if you believe by faith and walk by faith and forsake your sins. You know, as John 3, 36 says, He who believes in the Son has life, has everlasting life. He who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. I don't want the wrath of God to abide on you. I want you to have life. I want you to have everlasting life. You've got to believe the Son and believe in the Son. You've got to do both. You gotta believe in the Son and then believe what He says. Believe what the Son says and do what He says. Go and sin no more. Repent or perish. Give right with Jesus Christ while you still have time. What are the horsemen from Revelation? You are. You wanna you wanna preach, bro? Praise Jesus Christ, the Lord of all. God is good. Praise Him every day. The Bible says, Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. You know, that means that when you, when you turn and repent of your sins and you give your life to Jesus Christ, it means that you, you really make a commitment that you're going to do it the rest of your life, all the days of your life. Psalm 104, he says, he was, says, I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. The Bible says that the dead shall not praise him but the living. 
you know, you, that's that's really the hope is that you are you live on forever. That you're really in a place where you're living on forever and you're able to praise the name of Jesus Christ forever and ever. You know, Jesus, the Bible says, whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. You know, having the Son is having eternal life. When you possess Jesus Christ in you, and, and, and he possesses you as well. You possess him and he possesses you. You're walking in the Spirit of God. The Bible says that, the Bible says that uh, to be spiritually minded, uh, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You know, life and peace in Christ. Life and peace uh, because you are at peace with God. That's why this message is called the good news. It's, it's the one galleon, the good news, the, the, the gospel. It's able to reconcile you to God. You know, the, the Bible says that, 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 that through wicked works, you are an enemy of God in your mind. You know, your wicked deeds have separated you from God. You know, this is a, this is a foundation of the gospel message that you have, you are, when you're living in sin, you are in a place of God's wrath. The Bible says the soul that sins will die. You know, your sin will find you out. It doesn't matter if you call yourself a Christian. You know, the Bible says in, in uh, Psalm 68, it says that God will wound the head of his enemies, the hairy scalp of the one who still goes on in his trespasses. You know, you still go on in your smoking. You still go on in your pot smoking, your, your alcohol drinking, your, your drunkenness, your homosexuality. You know, when you go on in these things, you are, you are setting yourself up as an enemy of God. You know, God, God wants to make peace with you, but you know what? God's not going to do it on your terms. God is not going to make peace with you through, through your terms, through you living in the state that you're living today. You know, Adam and Eve, when they sinned in the Garden of Eden, they reached forth and they did that which was wicked. They disobeyed God. God, God cast them out, the, out of the Garden of Eden lest they would grab hold of the tree of life and eat the fruit of it and live forever. God did not want Adam and Eve to continue on in a state of perpetual sin and yet live on in, in a state of wickedness and fallenness in their sinful state. You know, God will not allow that. God removed them from the Garden of Eden. And, and, and to this day, we live in the fallen world we live in because sin entered the world through him, through one man. But you know what? Life, uh, life and immortality has been brought to light through Jesus Christ. He is the second Adam. He's the one that has brought forgiveness of sins. The Bible says in the book of Acts that through Jesus Christ, uh, uh, through that man, forgiveness of sins is preached. And you're able to be justified by, from all the things that the law of Moses was not able to justify you from. You know, the Bible says that uh, in, the, in the law of Moses that if you murdered somebody, that you are, are guilty and there's no atonement, you deserve to be killed. The, Bi the Bible says, uh, Jesus said, if you hate somebody in your heart, if you have anger or hatred in your heart, it says that it's the same as committing murder. Jesus said this, he said that, that whoever looks upon a woman to lust after her, has committed adultery with her in his heart. Many of you men out here are tempted. You know, the, wo the woman said that, that uh, accused us of looking at these women's body parts because they're exposed. But you know, I haven't been doing that out here. But you know what, many, ma I know many men, because there's the temptation, are looking at the women's body parts, are lusting. You know, the Bible says when you do these things, you've committed adultery in your heart already. You know, these things are severe warnings. These are, these are things that you shouldn't take lightly. You know, the Bible says that the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. You know, God's wrath is forever. The Bible says, that, the Bible says I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. And God does it that men should fear before him. You know, you should, you should fear God knowing that God's judgments are permanent. Knowing that God's judgments are, are going to go billions and billions of years on into eternity. You know, you want to have a great day at the beach. You know what? But, but, but you, don't want to, you don't want to spend one day in hell. You don't want to spend one day, you know, suffering in a lake of fire because of your sin. You know what? But, but God's judgments go on and on forever and ever. You know, and it's more than one day. It's forever. 
folks. It's, you know, Jesus said this. He said, what would it profit a man if he was to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? Many of you out there, you wouldn't want to be Warren Buffett, even though he's a wealthy man, because he's old. He could die at any moment. You wouldn't trade your life to be a rich man like Warren Buffett. But you, but you, but you know what? Maybe if he was younger, maybe if Warren Buffett was in his 20s, you would. But, but you know what? You realize that riches do not profit in the day of wrath. But the Bible says that righteousness delivers from death. You need righteousness in your life more than anything. You don't need any more money. You don't need any more uh, relaxation and comfort. You need, you need righteousness in your life. You need the righteousness of, of God, which comes by faith. You know, and the first step of that is you repenting of your sins. You know, repentance and faith is the main point of the gospel. Repentance. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, he said, unless you repent, you will likewise perish. You know, there's no, there's no other way. It's not because you said a prayer, not because you go to the, the church, the Catholic church, the, the whatever church you go to. It's not because you're religious. It's because you've repented. You've really surrendered your life to God. That's what the difference between a sinner and a saint. You know, a saint is somebody that's set apart. The word uh, saint, it means to be healed. It means to be sanctified, set apart, holy to God. You know, the Bible says that Jesus was, was, was uh, holy, harmless, undefiled, and separate from sinners. You know, G Jesus, Jesus was set apart from this world and all its corruptions. You know, that's really where you find eternal life. It's when you, when you are set apart from the corruption that's in this world through lust. What are these things that you're seeking after instead of the heart of God? What are these things that you're pursuing instead of God's will? You know, really the Bible, the Bible says the, the, the most uh, condemning thing in your life is that you're not seeking God and you're just living for yourself. You're living how you want to live. You're, you're making your own decisions. You're saying what you want to say. You know, it says in Psalm chapter 11, it says, help, help, Lord, for the godly man ceases and the faithful disappear from among the sons of men. It says, everyone speaks idly with his neighbor with flattering lips. It says, in a double, double heart they speak. Who have said, our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? And then the Bible says, may God cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaks proud things. You know, you know, you say, you, 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 you say that your lips are our own. You cuss. You use, you use vile language. You know, you, you, these things come from your heart. You know, earlier a guy was saying that God knows his heart, despite the fact that he sells whiskey and he, he curses like a sailor. Oh, God knows my heart. He knows I'm a good guy. Well, how are you really proving that you're a good guy? You know, the Bible says, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. You know, the Bible says, as a man looks upon the waters, it says, so, the, so is the man's heart to the man. You know, when you look at a reflection in a mirror and you see yourself, that's like you seeing your heart. You know, the things you do, the things you say, the things you're pursuing. You know, are these things really centered on Jesus Christ? Are they really centered on, on, on your love for God? The Bible says, do not love the things that are in the world. It says, do not love the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. For all that is of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world passes away with its lust, but he that does the will of God will abide forever. You know, I want to abide, I want to abide forever with Jesus Christ in eternity. I know it's, he's the way, the truth, and the life. You know, I'm going to live on with God. Where will you be when that happens? You know, the Bible says, if scarcely a righteous man is saved, where will the, the ungodly and the sinner appear? If scarcely, if scarcely a righteous man is saved, where are you going to appear? What's going to happen to you? You know, the Bible says, the Bible says in, in the book of Luke, uh, somebody asked Jesus, said, they said, Lord, are there few that are saved? And Jesus said, strive to enter the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able to. You don't want to try to, you're, you're standing at the gate and you want God to let you in. And it says, and when once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door and, and you begin to stand outside and knock, and, and, and then you say, you say to him, Lord, Lord, open for us. And he'll say, I tell you, I do not know you where you are from. And then you, then you begin to say, Lord, we, we ate and drank in your presence and you preached in our streets. And he'll say, indeed, I tell you, I do not know you where are you from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. The Bible says there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets 
in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. It says they will come from the east and the west and the north and the south and sit down in the kingdom of God but the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown out. It says that there's many that are last that will be first and first that are last. You know in America a lot of people are first today. You got you know we're first in, in luxury and in our lifestyle. You know America's first. You're 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 an American. You 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 have all these uh, conveniences. You have money. You know, but Jesus said in his kingdom, he said, the first will be last and the last will be first. You know, I, and, and you know, you, 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 you sacrifice, you sacrifice all the suffering of righteousness and doing God's will. You sacrifice it on the altar of your pleasures. But in the end, it condemns you. In the end, it, it brings de de destruction. You know, Jesus said, how hardly shall the rich enter God's kingdom. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Many of you are too rich. You have too much uh, pleasure in your life. You have too many uh, prescription medi medication pills to, 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 uh, to help you with your depression. Many of you have too many things to ease your nervousness, e ease, your, ease your conscience. You have too many of these things in your life. And you know what? It's really turning you away from God. It's really keeping you from, from seeking God. It's keeping you in a, in a state of pride. It's keeping you in a state where you don't seek God. The Bible says about the proud, it says that God is, none of, is, is in none of their thoughts. It says, your judgments, O Lord, are far above, out of his sight. You know, these judgments that I'm giving you, these are not, these are not uh, things I've made up. These are things from the Bible. These are God's judgments. You know, the Bible says, uh, the Bible talks about the resurrection. And it says, blessed are those that, that will partake in the marriage supper of the Lamb. And they say this, and the, the, the angel said, these are the true sayings of God. You know, blessed are those that can partake in the marriage supper of the Lamb. You know, these things are the true sayings of God. God has spoken. You know, the Bible says that God has spoken once, twice have I heard that power belongs to God. You know, don't fear him that can kill the body, and after that he, he, he can do no more. Fear him that after the body is destroyed has power to cast your soul into hell. Him you should fear. You know, and you guys need to fear him today. You're not fearing God living in your sin. You're not fearing God living, living your lifestyle of, of pornography and drinking and, 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 and all these pleasures. Living a life for you. You know, it's, it's perishing with you. You know, you need to understand the, 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 the greatest revelation is that you need to repent and believe the gospel. You need to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That, that there's no salvation, there's no atonement apart from him. You know, and there's, and there's really, there's, there's, there's no salvation apart from you walking with God. Walking, walking in his steps. The Bible says in Psalm 119, it says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way they walk in the law of the Lord. The undefiled, those that have not defiled their garments with the, the corruptions that are in this world. You know, it says, it's, it says, they, 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 it says, they, it says the, those that seek him with the whole heart. They keep his commandments, they seek him with the whole heart. You know, how can a young man cleanse his way? It says, by taking heed according to your word. Oh, you need to take heed to God's word today. You have, you have forsaken it. You need, to, you need to have ears to hear. Oh, the word of God can save you. The word of God can change your life. You know, it's not just the word of man. It's not just like a, a reading a science book. It's not like reading some, some uh, National Geographic. This is the word of God. This is the thing that when it comes into your spirit and it's implanted in you, it is able to save you. You know, and you need to grab a hold of this word. You need to obey the word. You know, the Bible says that Jesus Christ be became the author of eternal salvation to all those who obey him. You know, he's the author of eternal salvation because he's the living word of God. And when you obey Christ, you depart from iniquity. You depart from your cigarettes. You depart from your drinking and drunkenness. You, de you depart from your foul language. You depart from your homosexuality. You depart from you wasting all this time sitting around watching so many hours of television. You know, the Bible says to redeem the time uh, for the days are evil. You know, your neighbor's on their way to hell. You're on your way to hell. Your neighbor's on your way to hell. When you become a Christian, you recognize people could die at any moment in their sin. And, they're, and it's, their fate is sealed at that moment. Bible says that, that God, it says, how do, he says, he says, oh, if Israel would have listened to me, he said, he said, how soon I would have subdued their enemies. The haters of the Lord would have pretended submission, but their fate would be sealed. Their fate would last forever is what it says. You know, you, you know, that's what's going to happen to you. There's going to be a day when your, the, your fate is going to last forever, you know, and you're going to get the wages of unrighteousness for all those who counted it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. 
Many of you are out here carousing in your 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 your, your, your little margaritas and your 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 drinks. You know, hanging out, carousing, looking at the women in their lewd bikinis. You need to come out of these things. You need to get right with God. You need to repent today. You know, today's the day of salvation. There's no more time. You know, the door's going to shut, and at that time, you know, you got to repent. You people are hard-hearted. You're, you're stubborn and stiff-necked and rebellious, and you need to turn to Jesus. You just, you know, it show, you know God's going to show you how evil your heart is when you repent, when you, when you stand before Him. When you stand before God on Judgment Day, God's going to show you your heart. you got a murderous heart in you. you got a, you got a wicked, evil, adulterous heart. And you, and you know what? God's going to show it to you, and it's going to terrify you. You know, and then all that's left for you is hell at that point. Unless you change, unless you become born again, born of God's Spirit. And you need to cast out this wickedness out of your life. The Bible says that you're a child of the devil living in your sin. The Bible says the devil sinned from the beginning. You're a child of the devil living in your sin. First John chapter 3, it says, He who sins is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. Oh, you know, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil in your life. You need those works destroyed in your life before it's too late for you and the devil. You know, God's going to throw the devil like a fire. He's going to throw you in there with them if you don't turn. You know, you need, to, you need to stop comforting yourself with this world. You need to be comforted by the Holy Spirit. And you need to walk in the fear of God. Repent today. Turn from your sins. Give you rest. Take up my.